Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Reviews. And today I am reviewing, and very, very happy to be reviewing, the brand new Taylor Swift fragrance, Incredible Things. Now, the funny little story I have about this fragrance before I go too far in is I have known about this and about its name since late July, early August, and sounds about right. In, I think, October, no, about middle of September, I posted on Taylor Swift's website on her forum about how there was a new fragrance coming out called Taylor Swift Incredible Things and just kind of wanted to see what people would say about it. And a lot of people posted saying, you know, that the name, like, they didn't like the name, they didn't like this, and they didn't like the bottle and whatnot because I had posted it. And then a few days later, I got a picture of the bottle and posted the bottle. And a lot of people were saying, you know, they didn't like it. They didn't like the name of it. They didn't, you know, they didn't think it was real. But that was just a rumor because it wasn't a very um, elaborate name like a lot of hers are done or anything like that. That, you know, just it being called Incredible Things was pretty basic. And what was funny was after... Um, her fragrance team announced it, and Elizabeth Darden announced it, and everything kind of announced it was official. Um, a new thread started on her account, and I noticed that almost everyone who on my account had said they didn't like it, the exception of a few, who on my post said they didn't like it, they didn't like the name, whatever, were talking about how they loved it, and this, that, the other thing, and I think it's weird how, like, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, like, I will admit right now, you guys know that I'm a huge, huge Taylor Swift fan. I've loved the name of this. I loved the idea of this since it first came out. I knew the concept behind it. I knew everything to begin with, and that's why I knew I liked it. But I think it's funny how people's inception can change on something just because it's been officially announced versus just a rumor. So, into my review. So, the box this time on, I'm not sure which one they're officially deciding as the front. I'm going to probably say it's going to be maybe this side. It's got a watercolor picture of Taylor, and this is, there's a picture, I think it's an award show, um, where she's dressed in like a really nice pretty red dress, um, that this picture almost matches. And then it's got these, uh, it says Taylor Swift Incredible Things Eau de Parfum Spray Vaporizer 1.7 ounce uh, 50 mil on the bottom right down here. And then it's got her watercolor face, and then on the sides of the box, it's got these watercolors, and on top we have the 13 and now that I look at it I actually think this is the back of the box because the 13 always faces the front so there's got that signature Taylor Swift 13 on the front and then on the front we have Taylor Swift incredible things more watercolor and this cool silhouette of her that's pretty similar to the one on the back it's just it's a silhouette um same thing on the front, it says Eau de Parfum Spray Vaporizer, 1.7 ounce, 50 milliliters. And then the sides are pretty basic. On the, the one side, though, it's got all of the uh, At Taylor Swift fragrances, Caution Flammable, ingredients, trademarks, all that fun jazz. When you open it up, it, um, inside is just plain white like this. Looks like that on the inside. And then the bottle is like this so it's like this milk glass kind of color almost like a porcelain color with this watercolor design that's on the front of the box that wraps around the bottle it looks like this and the silhouette kind of goes off to the side like that it says taylor swift incredible things right there on the front of the bottle it doesn't say what size it is on the front of the bottle it's on the bottom of the bottle to see that and then it's got the watercolors that kind of just wrap all the way around the bottle, like this. Do like a quick little once around of it. On the lid this time is that same Taylor Swift uh, 13 that we see, which sadly I we lacked in uh, Taylor and Made of Starlight, which I was really sad that there was no hidden 13 on there. But we do have a 13 on top of the bottle this time. And the cap is very, it's almost like ribbed, looks kind of like, it reminds me of like a Reese's Cup wrapper, sort of, or like a little flower, kind of. So, the inside is white, the top is gold, sprayer is gold, like that. Now, the 
press release for this said it was only going to be available in a 50 mil, and a 30 mil, and a 10 mil roller ball. So, I'm not 100% sure if that's completely accurate. Um, I know that um, Australia will be getting a release for this later this year. And generally with Elizabeth Arden fragrances, if we here in America don't get the 3.4 ounce 100 milliliter of it, they do over in Australia because like a lot of the Britney Spears fragrances here, they'll launch at Kohl's, which is where this is launching. And um, we'll only get like the 50 mil and the 30 mil, and then they'll go over in Australia, they'll get the 100 mil for it. But I do know that over in Australia, they are getting a much bigger launch for it than we are here in America. This is not actually officially available here in America yet. It will be available later this month in the month of October at Kohl's. If you live in Canada, you can already go get this. It is available at uh, Shop Shoppers Drug Mart or Super yeah Shoppers Drug Mart and Farmix. Um, so there's that for you. The notes of this fragrance are as followed. The top notes are pink pepper and sparkling grapefruit. The middle notes are wild passion flower. Vanilla Orchid and Suede Flower, with base notes of White Amber, Creamy Musk, Madagascar Vanilla, and Haitian Vetiver. So, the one thing I will tell you guys, I thought looking at the press release for this bottle, because in the press release the bottle kind of sits like this, and I thought it looked a lot thicker than it is, because it's really kind of a thin um, bottle, but I thought it was a lot thicker um, according to its press release than it is. Um... So going off of its notes, when you first spray it, it does have a little bit of, the grapefruit probably the most prominent note when you first spray it, but the pink pepper is there to kind of add this very subtle spiciness to it. But it does quickly kind of, not super quickly, I mean the grapefruit is really kind of allowing itself there. But the, um, trying to think of the way I want to say this, the florals of the heart kind of start coming through already at the beginning. And as they get to the middle, you smell the wild passion flower, which has a fruitiness to it for it being a floral, but it is a very um, light floral. The vanilla orchid adds um, this kind of sweetness to the fragrance that's not super sweet. Um, and the suede flower kind of adds a little bit of a softness to it, I guess is the easiest way to describe it. And then it, the, the base comes out. And I think the most prominent note in the base is the creamy musk and the vanilla. Excuse me, and the vanilla. And that is because it is really vanilla fragrance. Not saying vanilla as in like plain, but vanilla as in it does have a lot of vanilla going for it. But what's nice about this fragrance is the florals kind of add this niceness to it. So it almost kind of smells like a floral, lavender-y... Even though there's not lavender in it, I can kind of smell a little bit of a lavender. Um, but that is the passion flower coming through. And the vanilla... Um, the Madagascar vanilla is a really potent, extreme version of vanilla. It's very, like the highest form of vanilla you can get. And it adds this very lightness to it. The fragrance is extremely light, and it's probably my favorite fragrance released by Taylor yet. Um, and that's because, via its concept, via everything that goes with it, it does follow everything very well. It is made to represent, with this new album, it's made to represent the 80s. And it's supposed to be modern and classic, yet modern... Er, it's supposed to be classic and chic, but modern and elegant at the same time, which I think the nail hits right on the head. Now... Many of you know I do work in, I have a part-time job in retail, and I wore this fragrance today while I was at work, and almost every single female, if not like every other one that I had a substantial conversation with at work today, did compliment me on my fragrance that I was wearing. It is a very different fragrance from a lot that's out there on the celebrity market right now. I will say that right now. If you are the kind of person who likes a lot of the sweeter scents like the Selena Gomez and the Britney Spears and stuff like that, you're probably not going to like this one as much because it is much more mature for a celebrity fragrance, but it is also following that concept of the 80s. So I think it perfectly describes the 80s in a fragrance. Um, 
it's nothing in my mind terrible like White Diamonds and some of like the Chanel Number no. 9 and some of the other things that are from the 80s that do smell. Like Chanel Number no. 9 is obviously not from the 80s, but some of the things that are reminiscent of the 80s and people think, you know, okay, grandma, stuff like that. It's not like that at all. It is a very light and elegant and sweet fragrance, but sweet in the aspect of it being a modern sweet or a more mature and modern sweet than a candy sticky sweet. Um, it's a very creamy fragrance on top of that. It does stay close to the skin, but does have a good sillage where it does project itself out a little bit. It has amazing lasting power. Um, I sprayed this on myself around one o'clock and it's almost nine and I can still kind of get hints of it every now and again. It is a phenomenal fragrance from Brit um, from Taylor. Um, but I will say that if it is not my favorite, Made of Starlight's my favorite, but they're battling it out right now because they're both such really, really nice fragrances in the aspect of what they are. So my opinion on this, it to kind of sum it up, is a very um, modern um, slash classic elegant fragrance that is perfect for the fall and early winter. Um, perfect for kind of like the, like today was really kind of rainy and drizzly and I felt it fit perfect with the weather today. Because um, that kind of adds this happiness and sunshine to what could be a dreary day. Um, it lasts about, I say, eight hours. We'll give it an eight-hour lasting time with the possibility of lasting a lot longer. There will be a gift set available for this at Kohl's with a complimenting lotion and shower gel, which will make the fragrance last even longer, as you guys know. But to give it kind of a synopsis, I would give it an age range of mid-20s, so about Taylor's age, 20, 24, 25, to upper 30s, that's kind of where it's going to range at. Granted, you can wear it if you are younger. Um, you guys do know I'm not 24 or anywhere near 24. But, well, okay, I'm close to 24, but not as close as some people. Anyway, um, it does project well and works well with a lot of people's body chemistry. I will tell you that. It, like My body chemistry sucks sometimes when it comes to fragrances. And this one worked really, really well because I know a lot of fragrances that have a little more of the earthy tones don't work as well with my body chemistry. But I do, do absolutely love this fragrance. And something tells me I'm going to be wearing it a lot, lot, a lot over the next few days. And hopefully I can get it to replace some other fragrances that I've been wearing way too much. So, as always guys, thanks so, so much for watching. And follow me on Twitter, A the S Perfume, and Instagram, Among the Stars Perfume. Links are in the description below. And always, guys, have a great day. Bye.